Tēnā koutou katoa. My name is Lucy Hemmons and I'm a curator at Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Today I'm here at home in Ōtipōti Dunedin as we continue to work remotely as part of our response to the 2020 COVID-19 outbreak. The situation has made me reflect on artists and artworks from our collection that intersect with some of the concerns of our recent days and weeks. One of the things I've noticed is the prominence of food in the media, issues of food security, radical changes to our shopping habits and the role of mealtimes in food preparation in shaping long days and weeks in isolation. This led me to thinking about cooking, art and politics and in particular a series of works in our collection by the artist Marilyn Webb, Taste Before Eating, first made in 1982. Personal, political and powerful, this is a unique body of work that folds together the artist's life experience, her environmental activism and her feminist principles in a sharply funny and astute series of work. Marilyn Webb, who whakapap is te Ngāpuhi, is a nationally and internationally renowned artist and educator. She trained as an art educator in Dunedin in the late 1950s and later moved here more permanently in 1974 when she was awarded the Francis Hodgkins Fellowship at the University of Otago. Best known as a printmaker, Webb is particularly known for her environmental advocacy. The works we will look at today in Taste Before Eating speak directly to this activism. Taste Before Eating was created in 1982 and is held in two forms in the collection of Dunedin Public Art Gallery, as a limited edition portfolio of 22 works and as a smaller series of large-scale text and print-based works. It should be viewed against the backdrop of these early years of the 1980s in Aotearoa, when the government, under Prime Minister Robert Muldoon, was promoting its Think Big economic strategy. As part of this initiative, the government enabled a series of large industrial projects, many of which required major interventions on the natural environment. At the same time, in Webb's home of Ōtipōti Dunedin, there was a rising protest against a proposed aluminium smelter in the coastal settlement of Aramoana. For Webb, these incursions onto the landscape were of mounting concern, and some of her most political works were made over this time. Taste Before Eating was among them, a satirical commentary on the exploitation of natural resources for economic gain. Taste Before Eating found its start when Webb was dining at a hotel in Auckland, and a pudding was brought out into the restaurant topped by large sparklers that proceeded to drop filings and soil the top of the dessert. The pudding was an Aunt Daisy special, a ngaruahoi snow, and the sheer ridiculousness of the situation was lodged into Webb's mind. Her following works included her own recipes, written in the style of Aunt Daisy, accompanied by prints featuring threatened landscapes reimagined as food items. Taste Before Eating hinges on the interplay between this Aunt Daisy style and Webb's own. Aunt Daisy was an iconic New Zealand broadcaster between the 30s and the 60s, offering, among other things, cooking and household advice. Webb delivers her astute political observation in a deadpan fashion, dressing her message up in the guise of a 1950s domestic ideal. Works such as Drowned Clusa Pudding call for central Otago ingredients on an industrial scale. 10,000 apricots, 10,000 cherries, 10,000 peaches, plums and nectarines, all held together with 10,000 packets of gelatin. Her instructions ask the reader to organise a small town into working parties and later take their monumental puddings and carefully choose high places among the tours in the Cromwell Gorge. When the sites are marked, use working parties to assemble the rocks into cairns, take the puddings and quietly mount them on each cairn, finish each with a plaque and inscribe it July 1982. Drowned Clutha Pudding refers to the development of the Clyde Dam under Muldoon's government and the 1982 enacting of the Clutha Development Empowering Act. In Webb's landscape, the puddings loom large down the valley, awaiting their fate at the hands of Think Big. As the series progresses, Webb's points become increasingly direct. In Mining Crumble, she calls for the cook to gather their ingredients and pour over three quarters of a cup of polluted water and sprinkle with brasso and ground bird bones. Rub two and a half tablespoons of butter into half a cup of silica and sugar until crumbly. The recipe ends... This simple dish could be served at a variety of functions, including small dinner parties for multinational companies paying informal courtesy calls on New Zealand. 
Across all these works in the series, Webb's protests are personal and localised, moving from protest to lament. The plight of Otago landscapes is a prominent issue, none more so than in Aramoana Soup, a work that responds to the proposed smelter. In Aramoana Soup, her point is clear. Find a dead albatross, a dead swan, a dead shag, a dead heron, a dead seal, a dead penguin, a dead shark, some dead sandpipers and assorted flat fish. Prepare a stock with them and let it stand for some days. Strain and discard bones, beaks, feathers, feet and skin. Add the following ingredients to the stock. One sack of blue mussels, one sack of cockles, one sack of fluoride, one sack of carbon waste, one sack of cyanide, and one sack of southern tuatua. Cook for a week at alternating high and low temperatures. Garnish with dry, chopped salt marsh vegetation and seaweed. Choose a restaurant with a high noise level and serve the soup at blood heat in aluminium bowls. Finally, add the cost of the electricity incurred in making the soup to the diner's bill. Webb is one of Wotipoti and Aotearoa's most treasured artists, and it's been a pleasure today to look closely into just one series within her extensive career. If you are interested, visit the Dunedin Public Art Gallery YouTube channel and hear Webb talking about her work, including Taste Before Eating. You could also visit Creative New Zealand's YouTube channel and search Marilyn Webb to find another excellent interview. And so, as you contemplate your cookbooks and plan your next meal, I'll leave you with these thoughts of Marilyn Webb and Aunt Daisy and the power of food and art to feed both our bodies and our minds. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the gallery soon. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā katoa.